Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to the channel. Now, vitamin D has been in the spotlight for almost two years now, and by now you have probably watched other YouTube doctors such as Dr. Campbell, Dr. Bean talk about how vitamin D plays a role in COVID. But I want to take a different approach on this topic and I'm not going to repeat what they have already covered. So today let's look at what is the latest finding on vitamin D and briefly go over how vitamin D interact with our immune system. And third, how can we optimize the vitamin D level in our body? So let's find out. And by the way, for my viewers that use British English, I know it is called vitamin, not vitamin. But here I'm just using the US pronunciation. Number one, what's the latest finding on vitamin D? An article was published just a few days ago on February 3rd, 2022. A team of Israel researchers investigated the pre-infection vitamin D3 levels and the severity of COVID-19. This is a retrospective study where they looked at the records of individuals admitted to a medical center between April 2020 and February 2021. They tried to look for a pattern association between vitamin D level and the severity of COVID-19 infection. Like many previous studies has suggested, this study also saw severe or critically sick COVID patients were more common to have lower vitamin D levels, and patients with vitamin D deficiency, which is less than 20 nanograms per mil in their blood, were 14 times more likely to have the severe or critical disease than patients with 40 nanograms per mil of vitamin D in their blood. Other research has established the human body needs a minimum of 30 nanograms per mil of vitamin D in their blood to maintain a healthy level. A different recent study published on January 26, 2022 in the British Medical Journal showed the beneficial effect of vitamin D through a five-year randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. This is the gold standard of clinical trials. There were 25,871 participants in the study, about an equal amount of male and female participants aged 50 and above at the time of enrollment. Now, the participants took 2,000 units of vitamin D every day with or without omega-3 fatty acids or matched placebo for an average of 5.3 years. At the end of the study, the average age of the participants was 67.1 years old, and participants who took vitamin D with or without omega-3 had a 22% reduction in autoimmune disease development. Now, this finding showed a significant benefit of vitamin D in helping to reduce autoimmune disease incidence, particularly in older adults. So how does vitamin D interact with our immune system? By now you may think vitamin D can strengthen our immune system, but it is a little bit more complicated than that. Now on one hand, vitamin D can strengthen our innate immune system. And on the other hand, it can also suppress inflammatory responses commonly associated with abnormal B cells and T cells activities in autoimmune diseases. As early as 1849, American physicians have documented using cod liver oil, which is rich in vitamin D, to treat tuberculosis and to increase general protection from infections. Several other reports have also shown lower vitamin D levels are associated with increased rates of influenza infections, bacterial vaginosis, and HIV infections. The beneficial effects of vitamin D on protective immunity are partly due to its effects on the innate immune system. Vitamin D has been shown to bind to macrophages and increase antibacterial peptide productions. Now, these peptides can kill the bacteria by disrupting its cell membrane and have a strong antibacterial activity. Vitamin D can also decrease the production of inflammatory cytokines and increase the production of anti-inflammatory cytokines. 
and regarding its benefit in autoimmune diseases, vitamin D plays an important role in guiding the adaptive immune system to recognize our cells, so that the T cells would not mistakenly starting to kill our cell, and the B cells would not produce antibodies that can attack our own tissues. Now we know vitamin D is so important. So how do we optimize its level in our body? It is almost a common knowledge that sunlight can stimulate our skin cells to produce vitamin D. Still, it is challenging for people living in higher altitude to receive enough sunlight in the winter months, like where I am right now. Research suggests 50% of the worldwide population has insufficient vitamin D levels, and 35% of American adults have a vitamin D deficiency. When we cannot get vitamin D through sunlight, we tend to get our vitamin D through supplements. And certainly, this is a very wide topic, and I can cover that in another video. Being a foodie myself, I like to get my vitamin D through the food I eat every day. Vitamin D in food can be in two forms: vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. The main difference is that vitamin D2 comes from plants, and D3 comes from animals. Now, almost all of the milk sold in the U.S. is artificially fortified with vitamin D. They are fortified with vitamin D3. Some are fortified with D2, but most of the time, drinking milk alone is not enough to provide the recommended daily value of vitamin D. If you are a vegan, your best option to obtain vitamin D is by eating mushrooms. According to the NIH report, half a cup of raw white mushroom containing up to 46% of adults' daily value of vitamin D. And I just have some mushroom with me. I don't know if I like raw mushroom that much. If you do not have diet restrictions, then cod liver oil, trout, and salmon are the few foods that have the highest level of vitamin D3. Now I love salmon, and it is part of my staple food. Other foods such as sardines, eggs, tuna, and cheese can also provide a small amount of daily value of vitamin D, and it is a good idea to include them in part of your daily diet. In summary, vitamin D is not only important in maintaining bone health; it also plays a crucial role in the immune system. Now, I strongly advocate you get your daily vitamin D requirement through what you eat, or maybe the sunlight if the weather permits. Now, I hope you have learned something different about vitamin D than all the other vitamin D videos on YouTube. And I know I didn't cover a lot or anything particular regarding the vitamin D supplements. And if you would like to learn more about that, please leave me a comment and let me know. That is all for this week, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Now, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more health science content. And meanwhile, please stay safe, stay healthy, and take care. Bye.